This prosthetic knee doesn't just bend, it shortens the leg mid-step and projects its pivot point to another location to help the amputee walk better. Sounds insane, right? Let me tell you, it's real and not so complicated as you might think, but damn clever. Today, we are going to uncover the brilliant mechanics of one of the smartest pieces of orthopedic technology. You will learn how polycentric knee joints work, why they are so damn brilliant, and by the end of this video, you will never look at walking the same way ever again. There are two major types of prosthetic knees, monocentric and polycentric. Monocentric knees have, you guessed it, one pivot point, whereas polycentric knees do have multiple. There are hundreds of different models out there, but the main principles stay the same. Roughly 40% of prosthetic users rely on polycentric knees. So what makes them so special? In order to be able to understand this, you must know when a knee is safe, when is it unsafe. Every time we stand or take a step, the ground pushes back through our leg. The position of that force relative to the knee joint determines what happens. If the ground reaction force passes in front of the knee, it pushes the leg into extension, which is great for standing and stability. If the ground reaction force passes behind the joint, it promotes flexion, which we want right before the swing phase of walking. But if the knee flexes at the wrong time, like while standing, that's a big problem. So prosthetic knees and prosthetics in general are designed to prevent unwanted flexion in three main ways. One, by aligning the leg in a way so that the ground reaction force does not promote knee flexion. Two, by using friction or mechanical stops to resist movement. Or three, and this is the genius part, by changing the location of the knee's pivot point entirely. This is a typical four bar polycentric knee joint. You'll see four pivot points, four axes of rotation, all connected in a linkage system. So which of these is the actual center of rotation? Right, none of them. The true center is found by drawing lines through the pivot points and seeing where they intersect. That's the instant center of rotation. And it moves as the knee flexes and extends. Yes, you heard that right. The leg rotates around a moving center of rotation. But first, let's look at how this mechanism increases the knee stability while standing. In a monocentric knee, the fixed pivot point is always in the same spot. But in a polycentric knee, the instant center of rotation moves. And when the pivot points end up farther behind the knee. This shift increases the amount of extension torque created by the ground reaction force, making it much harder for the knee to buckle accidentally. As the leg flexes, the pivot point shifts forward. This effectively shortens the leg by helping the foot clear the ground more easily during swing phase. This is huge. It reduces the chance of tripping. A good polycentric knee takes full advantage of this. But there is still even more. Now we have one big problem. We can't adjust the flexion and extension resistance at all. Until now, some polycentric knees add extra components, like air-filled cylinders. These cylinders compress air to create adjustable resistance during flexion and extension. The more you compress the air, the more resistance you get. The resistance can be tuned with valves, giving prosthetists control over how the knee behaves. It's smooth, efficient and works well. But there's a catch. Compressed air naturally pushes back when squeezed which can create a bouncing effect. This means the knee might briefly flex just before foot strike, causing the user to land with a slightly flexed knee. It's not necessarily dangerous, but it can feel unstable, especially for new or insecure users. So again, prosthetists must understand exactly how a given knee behaves before they prescribe it. Now let's take it even further. Some knees add a fifth axis. With this, the whole system gains a bit of rotational movement when the force is applied from the top. What does that mean? It allows the knee to flex slightly under load, right at the start of the stance phase. When the ground reaction force is precisely in this area, the knee does not get flexed, but it bounces a bit in itself. This bounce effect softens impact, reduces pressure and can make the walking feel smoother, especially for users with higher activity levels. There's even one more twist, the inverted polycentric knee. What happens if you flip the whole four bar linkage system upside down? Now the center of rotation shifts to a more distal and anterior position. This creates what's called a negative stability. In this setup, the knee stays completely locked during stance phase, giving maximum support. 
but as soon as the ground reaction force moves forward, the knee flexes, allowing for a smooth transition into swing phase. These designs are kinda rare, but they can be extremely helpful for users who need maximum confidence during standing or walking. In short, the basics of the polycentric mechanism stay the same, but every additional component adds new characteristics and trade-offs. So after all this, you might be wondering which prosthetic knee is the best? And the answer is, you might guess it, it depends. There's no one-size-fits-all solution. Each knee has strengths and weaknesses, and choosing the right one means matching the joint to the user's needs, activity level and comfort. But there's a key takeaway. You need to understand how these systems work. And the more you understand those fundamentals, the better care and advice you can give.